The sentencing proceedings for convicted murderer Dutugo Shoba begin in the High Court in Johannesburg today. This is after the same court found him guilty in March for the premeditated murder of his girlfriend Tsehofa Tsopule. The 28-year-old was found shot and hanging from a tree in Durban Deep. This is in Rodaport here in Gauteng. This was back in June of 2020. Let's get more on this story and we speak now to our reporter Linda Mnisi who has been following this particular case from the start. Linda, good morning to you. Yesterday you have been speaking to people who have followed this case just as closely as you did. What have they been saying ahead of the sentencing proceedings? Well, Koli, because we know today that the arguments that are expected will involve, of course, uh, Ntutuko Shoba's lawyer, perhaps uh, one can anticipate, uh, you know, asking for a deviation of the prescribed minimum sentence in this particular matter, which is a live sentence. There's, of course, great anticipation and there are great calls for this court to give him live imprisonment. From the Tsekhopato Pule Foundation, we heard yesterday how they want uh, nothing less than a double life. Now, what is the reasoning behind that? It's because that they say there are two lives that have been lost here, that of baby Kamano, who would have been the baby born, uh, you know, just the following month prior to their death, um, as well as Tsekhopato Pule for her life. So those are the growing calls from the, uh, you know, that section of this particular story, but you'll remember the public, uh, who you also see behind me, who have been rallying behind the Pule family, also calling, uh, you know, for more harsher sentences. I spoke to a neighbor yesterday, U Mam Han, and let's take a listen, Koli, before I take you to the people who are outside court, to what exactly she had to say about the sentencing today. <laughs> Whereby Ototo Hamabot Atronko Awa. I get a Rufa ten life sentence, I give only because ke in ten life sentence, Mutuna only one life. If bar life sentence, if a life sentence, as Nampa roll, Kamohari, Runa Luzi, the Runa, Shova and Okotronko, Bobo and Baya Bam Mone, Runa Rebul Redela Livica. That's as harsh as the people who have been affected by this particular murder are going to be with Ndutugo Shoba. The reality on the ground, though, uh, Linda, is that indeed the sentiment throughout that this person essentially is responsible for the murder of two people and therefore the walls of prison should ideally fall on him. Absolutely, Koli, and I mean, if you look at behind me, the people that have just arrived to make sure that they voice out their dissatisfaction about what has really happened. You'll remember this is a case that dates back to uh, June 2020, and there's been a lot of calls for a harsher sentence. I mean, if you remember during uh, the judgment, there was a lot of people outside court who were waiting to hear exactly what the criminal justice system makes of uh, the evidence that has been brought by, uh, you know, the state as well as the defense. Obviously, on the ground, they've been standing with the Pule family. And let's take a listen to, uh, you know, just a moment and take these visuals in and the sound and what, uh, you know, the people have to say, really. So, Koli, the, the song that's currently being sung outside courts is that he did this on purpose, and obviously the calls are that he should get a harsher sentence. So, the outrage has been expressed from the onset of this case because, like I indicated earlier on, it did show that violence in South Africa had reached new heights. If a heavily pregnant woman 
can be shot and hung from a tree, then it tells you a different story. And one would have thought that because these crimes would have happened and the criminal justice system has to some extent been sentencing some, there would be an end. But just over the weekend, Koli, there was the burial of Hillary Gardy, which tells you that we have not seen the end of gender-based violence. We have not seen the end of the killing of women in South Africa. Now, the eyes are firmly placed on the High Court in Johannesburg. Acting Judge Stuart Wilson has a duty then to deliver what will be a just sentence, but also a sentence that will, of course, be in the interest of justice. A number of factors, obviously, still have to be taken into account. He will, of course, be delivering mitigating factors. He will, of course, be saying why, giving the court reasons why it should deviate from the prescribed minimum sentence. But from the ground, it is clear that the expectation is that the judge should not de deviate from the prescribed minimum sentence. Umam Hani, that we spoke to yesterday, clearly saying that uh, a life sentence should be the one where the walls basically fall off, uh, you know, on him, and that he should not be released based on good behavior or even receive parole. Missy, thank you very much for that update. These are live visuals coming outside of court as we await the sentencing proceedings to begin this morning. We'll take you to those court proceedings as soon as they start.